This is part 28 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss a simple JavaScript closure example. This is the example that we want to implement. Every time we click a button on a web page, we want to increment the click count by one. There are several ways we can do this in JavaScript. One of the ways is by using a global variable. Here I have an empty ASP.NET web application project. To this project, let's add an HTML page. To keep things simple, I'm going to delete all of this auto-generated HTML and include the script tag. Let's set the type attribute to text slash JavaScript. And here, let's create a variable. Let's name it click count and initialize this to zero. Now let's include an HTML button. Type equals button, value equals click me. And on click of this button, we want to increment this variable value by one and then display that incremented value within JavaScript alert. Let's run the page and see if the click count gets incremented. We click the button the first time, notice that the value is one. Click it the second time, value is 2. Click it third time, value is 3. So every time we click the button, the click count gets incremented as expected. But the problem with this approach is that here click count is a global variable. That means any script on the page can access this variable and change its value accidentally. We don't want that to happen. We want to protect this variable. To protect the variable, we can make it a local variable within a function. So let's see that approach now. So I'm going to create a function here. Let's name this function increment click count. Notice that this variable is now present inside this function. So no other script on this page can access this variable. The only way to change this variable value is by calling this function. And this function is going to increment the click count value by one and then return that value. And on click of this button, let's call this increment click count function. Let's run this. Click the button the first time, notice that value is one. Click it second time, notice that the value is still one. Click it third time, notice that the value is still one. Why is that? Why is the value not being incremented beyond one? Every time we click the button, we are calling increment click count function. And within increment click count function, we have these two lines of code. So every time this function is called, click count is reset to zero, and then it gets incremented by one, and that value is returned. So that's the reason, no matter how many times you click the button, it's not incremented beyond one. To solve this, we can use a closure. So what's a closure? A closure is an inner function that has access to the outer function's variables and parameters in addition to its own variables and parameters and global variables. In very simple term, we can say a closure is a function inside another function. These functions, that is the inner and outer functions, could be named functions or anonymous functions. Let's see how to use a JavaScript closure to solve this click count problem. In our example, we are going to make use of anonymous functions. That is, both the inner and outer functions are going to be anonymous functions. Now, what's an anonymous function? Anonymous function is a function that does not have any name. Now, we can convert this function right here to an anonymous function simply by removing the name. At the moment, this function has this variable click count, which is initialized to zero. I'm going to have another anonymous function inside the outer anonymous function. And this inner anonymous function is going to increment the click count by one and return that value. Now, I'm going to wrap this entire code within a pair of parentheses. And I'm going to use another pair of parentheses. So what is this additional pair of parentheses going to do? This is going to make the outer anonymous function here a self-invoking function. 
and whatever result we get we are going to assign that to a variable let's name this variable increment click count and on click of the button we are invoking this function so since we are assigning a function expression to a variable this fun this variable now can be used as a function for the time being let's remove the parenthesis and run the web page now when we click the button notice what we get back what we get back is the inner function expression so what's happening here so when this increment click count function is called you know it's going to automatically execute the outer anonymous function and it's going to set click count value to zero and keep in mind the outer anonymous function gets executed only once and this inner function will have access to this, to this click count variable so click count is initialized to zero and the outer function executes only once and every time we click the button this inner function is going to increment click count so when we include the pair of parentheses here the inner function will be executed that means it is going to increment click count by one every time we click the button so let's run this click the button the first time notice that the value is one click it second time value is two click it third time value is three now the interesting thing to keep in mind is that this click count variable is present inside this function that means no other script on this page will have access to this click count uh, variable the only way to change this variable is by calling this increment click count function thank you for listening and have a great day